Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's lesson we're going to be going over lockout relays, what they are, and how they work. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. In today's lesson we're going to be going over lockout relays, what they are, and how they work. In this demonstration we're going to be using the ICM 220. A lockout relay is a relay designed with a specific purpose. The idea is to lock out a critical component. So let's say a compressor in this case shuts off on safety and even when the safety closes back again it will keep that compressor locked out to prevent it from any more damages. For the most part you see this associated with compressors so the purpose of the lockout relay is to keep the compressor off when there is a significant fault even if the fault condition goes back to normal. Here I have a diagram that comes with this relay itself. So inside this square is this relay itself. As you can see, we have one, two, three, and four contacts, and that is gonna be pictured here. So up here is point two, which states compressor contactor. Four is right here, so safety switches, one, it's one right here, they label it as common, and here's point three right here, which says malfunction light. Let's go over this wiring diagram so we can understand exactly how this lockout really works. If so far you're enjoying this content, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. Don't forget to share with your friends, and let's continue. So here we have our diagram, and let's just go over what we have here. We have two points of power. We have C, which is our common, and R, which is our hotline. So this is gonna be our 24 volt supply. Inside here is our lockout relay, and we have one, two, three, four points. One is labeled as your common, and if we pay attention between one and four, we have a set of normally closed contacts four is gonna be represented as your safety switches point. Between one, which is remember common, and three, we have a set of normally open contacts, and three is labeled as malfunction light. Two is this point right here, and it is labeled as compressor contactor. So if we follow that, you can see it goes to our load contactor. In this case, it's gonna be our compressor contactor. So this piece right here is our coil. One side of the coil, other side of the coil. If we follow this diagram, let's see, power comes in through R, 24 volts. It's gonna come in and go into one, which is our common, and then it can distribute. On a normal operation, power is going to come in, go through here, into our common. Since this is normally open, it will stop the flow here. It will go through here. And also, since these points are closed, it's going to go through four, right? Into one, uh, through four, passes through your safety switches. We have a low pressure and high pressure switch. Then it reaches our one side of the coil for our compressor contactor. And then here's the other side, which will then complete the circuit. One thing I would like to note, if you look at point three, which stands for malfunction light, as you can see right here, this would be another load and this could be a little light bulb. So if this lockout relay locks out, these points will close and send off an alarm signal, which in this case would be a light. So let's just go over how this works from the jump. These diagrams can sometimes can be confusing as there are things that are not labeled and things that are missing. One thing we don't have here is that we have a coil inside of this relay. The only coil that is listed here is this compressor contactor coil, but there is one in series with the coil in this relay. The one in the relay is a much smaller coil compared to the contactor coil which will play a role in how this works. 
here's our common here's our R which is our hotline our 24 volts and that is our 24 volt supply so power is gonna come in and branch off at this point as you can see it jumps over here and enters one which is our common power will go through the, this coil and then stop again at this side of the contactor but because we have normally closed points here electricity will pass through go through our safety switches and as long as our safety switches are in good order it's going to energize one side of the contactor coil and the other side is already connected to common so once the power passes through our contactor coil will energize the contactor the points will close and energize our compressor and in this case everything is running let's say the system is low on refrigerant what's going to happen is this low pressure switch is going to open and stop the flow of electricity to this contactor coil thus turning off our compressor but what happens is when this opens this contact will open, right, killing off the electricity flow to our compressor contactor. But at the same time, these contacts will close. And over here, if there is a light bulb in play, it will energize this light bulb, giving us a signal that, hey, we have a problem here and we are locked out. Next, when the system equalizes its pressures, this switch will close but these contacts will remain open and these contacts will remain closed what's interesting is that even though we kill the power to this contact coil it still isn't series with another coil for the relay itself the one in the relay is a very small coil compared to your contactor coil so what's going to happen is that it doesn't have enough electricity to actually energize this contactor coil it can only give us power for the small coil that's inside here so that's that's what's keeping these contacts open and this one's closed and not starting our system we're only going to have a light saying hey we have a problem or there might not be any light at all and the system is just locked out and the way we'll know that is if we check between one and four and see if these contacts are open or closed. The only way to reset the lockout relay is to kill power and turn it back on. So you can turn off your disconnect and turn it back on. And like that, we're gonna be back to normal where these are closed and these are open. And we can just continue the regular flow and have either air conditioning or refrigeration. If you're interested in me making a video of wiring one of these up and showing it in action, definitely leave a comment below. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.